Hey guys, I'm Ken. I co-founded and was CTO of Realbase, a company we recently sold for $180 million. And today I'm gonna to react to an article on why soft elites are evil and what to do instead. And I wanna share my experience that we had with them in production. So let's jump in. All right, so the article in question here, it's actually been written a while ago, May 27, 2014 by James Horsall from in the UK. And it's titled, Why Soft Elites Are Evil and What to Do Instead. So for a long time, I've always thought that soft deletes are the right way of deleting records from your database. Like most things within software development, you end up realizing that things are not always so black and white. While soft deletes provide a safe, and then he says, easily reversible way of deleting records, I've come to realize that they can create far more problems than they solve. Now, I guess the first thing we want to talk about here is what is a soft delete? So in general, in a database, when we delete a record, we clear it completely from the DB. It's no longer there. It's gone. It's a delete call and away you go, right? So there's the record's gone, clean. Now, what a soft delete provides or the way you implement a soft delete is having generally having a column, we used to call it hidden, and that would be a Boolean true or false, right? So it could be destroyed, it could, you know, you name it, whatever you, suits and fits your flow. And then what you do is you filter out records when displaying them on the front end by sorting where hidden is false, right? So then anything that is hidden true is not showing up and it is soft deleted. And the reason why we do that is so that you can delete a record or the user can delete a record, but then get it back. And that's where he's saying it's easily reversible. So you can just toggle that Boolean and the record becomes live again. Now, in a lot of SaaS platforms where the users may make a mistake, they may be like, you could have as many delete confirmations you want. Are you sure, Are you sure? They hit yes. And we've seen this many times. They delete the record and they say, that was three days worth of work that I just lost. This app sucks, I hate you, and <laughs> I'm gonna use something else, right? So we don't want that. So we implement soft deletes in that use case. So let's keep reading. So letting the database do its job. Our database is the best tool for managing relationships between our data, and when we use soft deletes, we're preventing the database from doing its job. We take the responsibility for cascading deletes away from the database layer and put it in the application layer, which it is not designed for, which is not designed to take care of this for us. Some ORMs will provide ways of cascading delete operations in memory, but these merely act as a proxy to trigger lifecycle callbacks on end. Now this is true, you are taking away that. So now if you wanna soft delete something, so in Rails, what we'll do is we'll have a destroy all. And when you delete one record, it'll cascade down and go through and delete the corresponding record. So if you have, let's say you have a project and a project has many, let's call it tasks. When you delete the project, you will cascade that down and the task will also be deleted. It'll keep the database in sync, right? When you do a soft delete and you soft delete the project, you are not touching the task. So they will still stay in your database. You will be ca carrying around data. The application is now in charge of showing the correct data. So if you don't have a filter in your application layer that says don't show records that where hidden is false, you will now end up with data that's not correct, right? So if you let the database delete that and you only reflect with that, it's going to be in sync. So that's what he's saying here. Now. He's showing a PHP example, so bear with me. I haven't used PHP in many years. But consider the following contrived example where we have user objects, which each belong to a group. Each group has many user instances associated within the database. So basically you have a, a group, could be a group, a company, something like that, many users, okay? So he's got his user model, he's got his group model, and a group has many users. So when you delete the group, you're gonna go here, you're gonna remove it, and you're gonna flush. So now that must be part of the ORM in PHP. And then this can go one of two ways at this point, depending on whether we are using soft deletes or hard deletes. If we're using hard deletes, awesome, we just removed the group and all the users. So the team and all the users are gone. We have no redundant data, and we, but we also cannot recover any of the deleted users that we may have wanted to keep. Okay, so that is this instance. This is the hard delete. This is the standard way. Once you delete those users, they're gone, right? You cannot get them back. It's very difficult. Well, it's actually mostly impossible unless, yeah. So we'll keep moving. If we're using soft deletes, we have a couple of issues. We haven't deleted any of the users associated with the group we deleted, which could be what we wanted, but it is also an unintended benefit of the situation. When we soft delete the group, we also expect all of the associated users to be soft deleted. The problem here is that our database has no native support for soft deletes, so we have to make our application do all the work. And this is a very fair point. So now you have to have logic in your app when you, to soft delete the group, you now have to go through every relationship and related entity and also mark those as soft deleted. Because if you now had a users 
view where you're viewing all the users and you had a groups view you'd soft deleted group but you didn't mark the users as hidden or soft deleted they will still show up in your list all right so that is a consequence of this behavior and something we generally want to avoid all right so here we go so he says what can we do instead let's take a look at our group manager delete method again but this time let's take into account the necessity to also delete the user objects that are associated with. you never want you would never implement the deletion like this because all your users would have to be stored in memory. However, it serves to illustrate the point. So he's now got a group manager, a delete function, removes the group, and then, yep, here we go. So now he gets all the group users, loops through that, and then removes all of those, and then flushes. Okay, because that works, but it isn't ideal. But now we have our group manager, not only managing the persistence of the group objects, but also managing user objects too. And then this breaks our SRP, and I believe that's single responsibility principle, and we can do a lot better. How about if we fight an event when the group is deleted? So here we go. So we go now, we delete the group, and now we dispatch an event, group deleted, flush. And now the rest of the application can listen to that event and then clean up the data. Right now, you, as you can already see, this is starting to create quite a bit of complex, but it's cascading soft delete. But now we can say it's easy to see already that our domain logic will become quite polluted with this kind of logic. And we want to reduce the amount of code we write, not increase it. Not only that, what if someone removes that listener and forgets to add one somewhere else for new relationships. Things get messy when you have data floating around your application, which should have just been deleted, but never was because we forgot to write the code to do it for us. It's nasty. So this is very fair. And this is something you definitely see with soft delete. We many bugs come up and arise from it, but there is that necessity to enable this behavior so that you can have the ability to go and rewind, right? You'll see this in a lot of apps. A lot of apps will like, you'll move it to trash and it'll sit in trash for a while and then it will be deleted later. So Rails has this, and, and I've seen this in some of the models called incinerable. I think it's incinerable, but it basically, you can take, it'll put it in soft deleted, but then what will happen in 30 days time, it'll run a cron job and it will go and clean that up. So what you're doing there is you're actually almost getting the best of both worlds. You're getting the ability to do a soft delete and I can change my mind within 30 days or whatever time frame I set, but then I can come back, the system will come back later and delete it and then it'll cascade that delete all the way through, right? So that is one solution to this problem, but he's got a different solution. So let's keep reading. So here we go, creating an audit log. So he says, as I mentioned earlier in the article, as soon as we start using soft deletes, we are preventing the database from doing its job. We configure our database to manage relationships between data using foreign keys and cascading operation. It is far better to have a, the database perform hard deletes on your data. It is the best tool for doing so. However, what about the benefits of soft delete that we lose with a hard delete? The main two are accountability for action and ease of recovery of our data. This is still achievable with hard deletes, but we just have to go about it in a different way. And he goes on to say, I'm now very much in favor of the idea of audit logs for deletion. A basic audit log can simply store objects if using an ORM or records in a serialized format so that we have a copy of them for future use. Let's consider a simple example using our group manager. We will still fire an event to our group manager delete method, but this time it will be more generic to allow a listener to create a copy of it in the audit log. So he's got a group manager here. He calls the method delete, removes the group, and then it dispatches entity deleted and new entity delete event. And our listener will look something like this. So he has a listener here and it says on entity delete, it gets the entity, it serializes the entity. So basically if you have something, uh, some sort of model, you could turn it into JSON, you could turn it into something that you can store, you get the current user. So this is very important, like who deleted that record? You know, there's a lot of times in SaaS software where you have multiple people working on a project or something and they say, I never deleted that. And we had this problem in RealBase and RealHub. And what we did is we actually introduced something called an activity log, very similar to this audit log. And we would store when an action happened and who did it at what time. So you could see, because what we would have also is we'd have people in multiple roles. Some people worked Monday to Friday and then some people would come work the weekend. The weekend person would come and delete something and then the person would come back on Monday and say, I never deleted it, your system did. Right now we know it's very hard for a system to do so, but to get around this, you add the activity log, you now log who did it. And then you can say, hey, look on Monday, the sport team look and go, oh, actually Sammy did it over there on a Saturday. And they go, oh yeah, Sammy, he's always doing that. So it just removes that friction and the customers are all and can be happy because they actually understand what's happening and this is exactly what this is doing here so getting the current user getting the entity and then it's creating a new order entity which entry which would be a model in the database setting the content setting the user the class and the created time so right so you're saying what time it happened and then you're creating it and then he said whilst this isn't a perfectly solid example it demonstrates what we can do 
Our audit manager will persist the new audit entry containing a serialized copy of data removed, the name of the original object class, so we can restore it later, and the user who performed the action, right? So the key thing here is now serializing all the fields. And this can get pretty messy if it's a record that's like quite high up. So for instance, if you're talking about a project and a project management platform, we could have many different relationships and related entities. You will now have to, you will still have to go through and cascade that and store these all in the audit log. So if you delete the project, you have to delete, create an audit for the project, and then every single thing that's underneath, you'll have to do the same thing. So while this is kind of good, I still don't think it solves the problem. And then he just goes on to say, our domain layer is now no longer concerned with hard or soft deletes. We're simply creating an audit trail of delete actions or operations, which is good practice without complicating our business logic. Best of all, our database is a tool responsible for deleting data. So what's gonna happen here is all the data is gonna be deleted and you're gonna have the audit log. You are still going to loop through every single entity to create that audit for each one because you'd have to be able to reverse out of this. And unless I'm misunderstanding this and the serializer here can actually loop through in this PHP example and go through and find every related entity and create a serialized version of that with nesting, this is hard to reverse back on because you still have to, unless you go and create every entry, like I said, which is still a bit of work, right? So I actually prefer this method that I'm talking about before with Rails, or you could do this in any system to, to be fair. You do soft delete, so you have a column, hidden true or delete true. You go through and you do it on the, the items that are in lists or that do get shown, so your highest level entities. So usually if you have a project management system and all those entities are related to the project and you can't see them anywhere else, you just soft delete the project and away it goes, the project's no longer seen then you have a job that comes and runs every 30 days or every 14 or whatever your data retention policy says and you come through and you clean that all up and that will keep your data in sync in the long term and you still get that flexibility of being able to reverse because usually a deletion is like something like i deleted that yesterday i really need that actually well i deleted that five seconds ago and i actually need it whoops so you give the user the ability to back out of a decision so everything's not like game over, but you also keep your DB clean in the long run. And I think you can get that without having the audit entry. But like I said, I would have an activity or an audit entry is quite actually quite a good name here. I actually prefer it to an activity log where you can now say this user did this action. So we had this model. So we would say who was the actor? So it'd be user one performed an event or an action and it would usually be like project dot deleted. I like that naming convention, project.deleted or project, you know, it could be updated. We did it for everything. So it was updates, deletes, adding new images. It could be any event and then to the recipient. So what was it? So if you was like, let's for example, say user one project.deleted and then you'd have project two. So two polymorphic columns there. So it's got the class name and the ID. And that way you can show that in the UI and you can actually have a very good trail of what happens inside of a project or a campaign in our instance. So that is that. And I think it's something that you should definitely keep uh, in mind, like soft deleting versus hard deleting and deciding that. It's always a, a delicate balance. Like some things you can feel free to just hard delete, keeps uh, complexity down and simplicity is first. But there are times where things are a little bit more critical that you probably don't want people to just delete and then just delete it instantly. So you can opt for that soft delete flag, delete later, keep an activity log. And I think that's a very good kind of practice or best practice for working with SAS, especially when you have multi-tenant, it's very useful. So hopefully you got a bit out of that one. It's a new format. Let me know if you enjoyed it. Drop a comment down below, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell, chuck a like up there while you're at it, and I'll catch you on the next one.